Good morning, everyone. We're delighted and honored that we once again have Rabbi Eidlitz willing to share with us information on Pesach products. And we thank you, Rabbi Eidlitz. You've been doing this for us for years, and we should be able to do it on Mea Ve'esrim in good health. Um, I ask everybody to please mute yourselves. At the very end um, of Rabbi Eidlitz's presentation, he'll entertain questions. Okay, everybody, please mute yourselves. Rabbi Eidlitz, it's a pleasure and an honor. It's yours. Thank you. Good morning. And this means officially we're launching Pesach. Once Rabbi Muskin asked me to speak about Pesach, I know it's definitely coming. The, we have to be careful with many products. And many, of course, my main purpose is to show that are fine, even though they don't show something kosher la pesa. And the expensive times that we live, there's no mitzvah to spend money that we don't need to. We can redirect it, I'm sure, in good, in good fashion. Certain things, you should please look at the site, at the kosher West site. For instance, there's a Nespresso a very large Nespresso, many people have Nespresso machines, uh, coffee machines, and they have a, a few pages that are kosher la pesa. Rabbi Levinger from Switzerland sent it to me yesterday, and there's only a few that are actually not for pesa, most on his list. But it's much too large for me to share at the moment, but please, you'll find that on the sign. Uh, on the site, the um, Vanakashis in the K of Olive in Mexico has as well a large list of tequilas that without a P, they are with their chocolates under the K of Olive. All the ones that are listed again on the site are fine for Pesa. No Ashkoka will be listed for Pesa, but those uh, were definitely. Uh, fine to use. Something that came up this year that generally Colgate toothpaste is fine. Toothpaste today is not usually made as it used to. It used to be made with bone char and take from different animals uh, bone and uh, burn it and then grind it and it made for the rough, the roughage in toothpaste. It's not being done now. But the, the questionable ingredient is a glycerin, certain things. That's not, and as well, to make it sweeter, more palatable, there's also a corn syrup used in certain ones. Colgates are fine across the board. There are others that I've listed, most of the crest is fine. But Colgate toothpaste, that's not, is this a really useful product, a nice product? You'd want to ask, uh, if you have a shayla of it, ask your own, ask your own, must be concerning this halachically. But as far as the fat, these are called a wisp. Wisp are used greatly in hospitals and for people on the go. They don't have, they don't need any toothpaste. It's embedded in it. It's dry. It's a dry toothbrush disposables. Each one of them you just uh, throw away after some one-time use. They have pig gelatin in them. It's not a Pesach issue as much as it is that they, they say that they have gelatin. The company says it is pig gelatin that they are using. So that becomes more of a shy, like, is it a food or not? But in any case, definitely that is what the product is. And one of the things that we have greatly is uh, kidneyos. It's it's uh, past three four years been growing. Now in Israel, that's awfully clear. Israel has more sparding than Ashkenaz. Not that all sparding utilize kidneyos on Pesach. Uh, kidneyos kidneyos being whatever it is. There's a core kidneyos like with the Taz and the Shach we're talking about, which were used sometimes in uh, things like rice and corn that were used in maybe the same sacks as, uh, as, uh, as regular flour 
uh, problematic, or maybe it was that many people just got confused. Cornbread used to be made from uh, real corn, but often then, like now, with regular standard hummus flour added to it. So it was very confusing whether it was a kosher Pesach cornbread or not. And that may be the reason why it was accepted at the minute not to use uh, corn as well. Then there's a lot of stuff that are maybes and there are more that are not used because they're next to, they may be grown next to near downwind of Hummus fields. And that's, so some things were confused by the list. And I've listed it as on the site, the list of the uh, keep meals. And almost it seems to overtake our hummus restrictions that, that a great deal of what we aren't using is because it is keep meals, it's legumes, it is like hummus. But, and it is. That is, if you look at the JSOR, a very good organization in New Jersey, have an excellent uh, list of things for those Spartan who eat kidneys during Pesa, of which there are uh, many. There are also many who don't. Morocco, for instance, divided the size of the different sides of the country. Some do, some don't. Many other countries, not every, not all Spartan eat uh, kidneys, but many do. So there were, for the past few years, the OU has gone to OU kidney oat. The, um, the star K has gone to star S, a star Sparty, they call it. And again, it's not exactly for Sparty, it's for, for those Sparty kidney oats, but it, that, it, it, it brings in many tunas and a whole array of uh, cereals and other products that have in them kidney oats. And that's all very legitimate. The, the OK has such certifications. The thing is, those who don't eat kidneys really want to look carefully what the Hatcher says. And sometimes it's a little bit confusing. This is a product, I haven't seen it before in our area. Uh, there's uh, canola oil. Canola oil is the popular name for an oil. It's, it's a popular, it's a decent oil. Canola oil is rapeseed oil. It's with Allah, and what the real name of it is rapeseed. It's a type of a, um, of, of a bean, a type of a plant. It's rapeseed oil. Rapeseed oil should be kidney oils, but we do consider it's one of those things when it grows next to wheat fields, it gets mixed in. It, they consider that the post came in, Jewish tradition is considered to be uh, one of the kidney oils. The, Canoe oil itself uh, is, is a made up name. There is no such thing, there is such a thing as rapeseed. There's no such thing as canola. Canola means Canada uh, oil. The, the person, the chemist who saw how to take the acid out of the rapeseed plant and to use the utilized oil was a Canadian. He was proud of it and said it's Canadian oil. And that's, that's canola oil. And then, in any case, where it's one of the many things that is considered kidneys. Here you have the hashkocha on it uh, from uh, Bet Yosef, from Eretz Yisrael. It says, Bet Yosef, Rabbi Mahpur, a few good people in Eretz Yisrael, write very clearly that it is, like this one says, kidney oak. It says right on the bar, it has kidneys in it. Other times they'll say, a little hashash kidneys on many of their products. So it'll be the Sephardi hashkocha, one of these reliable, good hashkochas in Eretz Yisrael. We'll say little hashash kidneys. Then it's not. It says no concern of kidneys. If it says so, it is so, and we can rely on it. We just do need to read it. It's only in Hebrew. It's not in English. It won't have it. Uh, some of these things are not, although it does say refined rapeseed oil in English, it doesn't, it does say that it's canola oil, but it won't say uh, more than that. We do have, there's also uh, a jasmine or may 
peanut oil. Again, Bet Yosef. This one says, only if you eat kidneys. It's a peanut oil. Now, Ramesha didn't 100% agree with that. Uh, way back when we didn't have many decent oils, we, there weren't a lot of uh, a lot of oils on the market that were kosher of Pesach. He was asked, could, could peanut oil be used? And he said, well, let's see. Peanuts are not really kidneys because they're just, they're not. It's, it's, it's a nut. The only thing is people didn't know what to make of it when they started seeing peanuts. So they said, oh, let's treat it like kidneys. Now, Peanut oil is dabra hayotsim in a kidneys. It's a derivative of kidneys. It's not kidneys. It's a derivative of it. That's the question of uh, corn syrup, corn oil. Uh, could that be used as a derivative of kidneys? Traditionally, it is not used by us in the, the better hashkafas, the OU, the OK, the star K. But the CRC, the Chavkeh, and so on, will not use anything derived from it. However, Ramosha did say peanut oil was different because it's it's a derivative of a mistake in kidneys uh, due to unknown. So it was used in the 50s and 60s into the 70s. It was sold with an OU, an OUP, and it's not any longer. I mean, so we didn't need it. So they said, why get into the question? Why get into the debate? They took off the OUP, and even from Israel now, they are saying it. However, it's something to keep in mind if someone does have a shayla of uh, that someone used a subpoena or I'll ask the rob a shayla, uh, one should right away throw away the food. There's other oils, of course. We have the uh, cottonseed oil, pure cottonseed oil, and pure vegetable, Manischewitz, which is owned by uh, Kenan, by Keiko. Um, the, uh, this is a uh, Glick, a Hamish brand. Either way, one is cottonseed, is a lot of cottonseed oil, a lot of, uh, and a lot of vegetable. The difference is generally, that the minute you're shalim, and that a lot of me know give me your shalim, that go way back, and uh, they won't use cotton oil. This is one, that, again, slightly debatable, and they won't use it. They won't, you won't find a badatz or uh, any of the hashkafas in there to solve the better ones giving on cotton seed oil. So there is, they make also vegetable oil. The not so good thing is that if you look at the ingredients, it says cotton seed oil. <laughs> it's just it's just related, really. It doesn't doesn't if that's a minute, it's a minute problem, then a person would be much better off using a different oil, and uh, that would be either a uh, coconut oil, all of the virgin or extra virgin. They started making this here extra virgin. Um, there are levels to how much you purify oil. You can go ahead and squeeze whatever you're squeezing and then you get an extra version. You can squeeze it further, you get version. You can now squeeze and you have junk in it, part of the pulp, and then you have to start cooking it. And that's called pure. That is pure, you purify it. It's like purified water. Then is ashkocha, the generally, uh, pure. However, the virgin uh, coconut oils, they come solidified because of the temperature. Those are all okay. Those are different, uh, different ashkachas, whatever. They don't need ashkacha for Pesach. The, the uh, olive oil, on the other hand, those do come in extra virgin. There's a lot going on with oil, including with olive oil, very expensive, very good commodity, something that's used greatly. And there, we have to be uh, careful what uh, using to use the extra virgin olive oil. And then, like the OU says, all of them are okay. It doesn't matter. 
all of those with or without, let's people say it's popular. They like Trader Joe's, they like the uh, Costco, um, the ones which is the least expensive apparently. That's fine. That's fine to use that. The BCK, which goes under two different marks. It used to be B, a C, a large a K in a box. Now it, they changed it to check K, a check mark and a K. It's the same organization. It was reliable, it remains reliable. It being said that the Trader Joe's virgin and extra virgin olive oils are both good. So Trader Joe's is unique in that they, the virgin olive oil, their, their virgin olive oil is, um, is okay as well for a person, uh, person to use. When getting uh, wine, of course, we drink so much wine, grape juice, then we, on the wine, about avocado one just later. Uh, the, when it when we go to wine, one thing to be careful of is that a person would not use the wine. There is still, it's only a couple years old, there's still some Shemitah wine out there that says on a product of Shemitah that I would not recommend uh, getting. There's an awful lot that is most that is not easy to get. When it comes to grape juice, there's different types. And we have to see what, what we're getting within the same companies, uh, even. There's a uh, one that says freshly kedem, as a freshly pressed without sulfite. Some people are allergic to sulfites. There's a grape juice that says without sulfites uh, that they're making. Almost everything has sulfites. When you take um, when you take the pulp, the, the uh, grape pulp, it starts rotting quickly and then it'll turn into wine. So they hit it with sulfites to stop it. You know, the wines usually have, certainly the lower alcohol wines have a lot of uh, sulfites added to them. So they do have wine for people who don't want sulfites. That is so. Uh, otherwise, most, uh, or all, not most, all of the kosher grape juice that we have are mavushal. They're, besides that one is mavushal. They're all mavushal. They're all cooked at over about 165 degrees temperature. The, uh, um, the okay ones are cooked for those who want to go like the other opinion has to be higher at over 200 degrees temperature, briefly for three seconds. And those are standard grape juice with the bracha made all year kosher the past. There is one in the glass that is made, the one and a half liter one, that is made not mobush. This is not mobush, good and bad. It's bad, we have to be careful that only Shammah Shabbos and only Jews touch it. If anyone has a waiter who's not Jewish or whatever, then a person may want to consider that they really want this on their table. On the other hand, uh, the Rambam says that this is great grape juice because it's potential wine. It's on its way to becoming wine. Yes, it's not wine now, but since they didn't kill it with pasteurization, then really if you throw a little yeast into it, it'll turn into wine. So that those people want to use uh, grape juice for the delicacies may want to consider this, which is why they do it. So because it is definitely elevated over the uh, everything over other types of uh, grape juice in, in the halacha. cocoa generally the Hershey's cocoa, the regular unsweetened cocoa. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been good for years and remains good. We should be careful uh, because of legal reasons. A lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, legal things that are added to uh, to every product. And if it says processed on machinery that processes whatever, that processes other things, processes hummus or kidneys, we shouldn't get it. That's not the case 
by the Hershey. They're big enough. They do their own product. They, they, this is all they do. But otherwise, uh, uh, not, not, uh, not an issue. It comes to nuts. Well, different things. Sun-made raisins. Uh, generally, these are sun-made raisins. These have the OK key on them. Some raisins have the triangle K uh, on them. Sometimes they'll have a P, maybe they won't have a P. Plain raisins, not the gourmet with oil. The ingredients are raisins. Uh, a, don't worry about the bugs. That's something that happened years ago in a small form company. Generally big, normal companies don't have bug issues and they are fine for Pesach without a hashkloch for Pesach. So sunmate is one, but that's only one of hundreds, hundreds that are good. Again, you just look, ingredients. There's two things to remember in this type of a product. A, the possess ingredients, raisins. This one, uh, I don't think says so. No, I don't see where it says it. Why? They don't need to. The law is from the FDA, if all that's in there is what you see, don't say it. There's no reason to say it. If you're holding an orange and the orange is uh, an orange, there's no reason to write on it a label contains orange. It's an orange. So that's it. That's where it stops. The same thing with the raisins. And again, they are fine, uh, both from the bug point and from the uh, peso. Uh, tea, the Lipton tea, uh, any tea, any tea. Uh, this is an example. It's only an example of Lipton tea and anything. When it says the word tea, just the word tea, legally that means that it is orange, pico, or black tea. Both are kosher pesa. Both are always kosher pesa. They are kosher all year, anything that says just the word tea is always a kosher product. It's when it starts getting something else with it. It's, a, it's a, this type of tea, that flavor tea, then of course we have decaf is also a problem. Then most of the companies now, almost all, uh, are using a decaffeination process that involves alcohol. It's faster, it's great, works very quickly. Some people don't like it because the natural way we would float it off is better, but it's much more costly, so they don't do it. Right now, the teas, not a problem if they're unflavored and regular. Decaf, decaf though, we're uh, at the sweet touch or many, many, many other companies with Sotsky, uh, does Bigelow. Bigelow has the Club K with Scott's K has the old, but they're going to have a pee on them. They do need it to show the alcohol used to, to disseminate the flavor was a kosher Pesach alcohol. That's where we can, uh, we can run into. So on the one hand, very easy to find. On the other hand, we need to find it. Uh, the the only uh, one that would be decaf again anyway it doesn't need it this sweet touch need but it, it but as of late they were putting it beyond it anyway the coffee there's only one of course there's the Maxwell House that may be but it has an OKP all year so there's nothing much to talk about but the uh, Folgers is the only one the regular Folgers. It's just either regular or decaf. The only one that's also decaf that is fine for Pesach and it does not need a shkocha for Pesach and as long as it's unflavored. But this is the only one without a shkocha for Pesach that is kosher for Pesach, decaf, and regular uh, both. The, many people have asked about what about Taste your choice. Well, you can get taste your choice all sorts of types. There's the this one that says in Hebrew, kosher for Pesach, kosher for Passover, and so on. This uh, is made in England, sent to Israel, sent back to the United States because it's illegal to make in competition here and costs all of that. 
uh, is that incredibly expensive. There's the regular, straight, uh, the taster's choice that is regular, not DKF, but it's a regular, not a problem. It does not need Hashgacha for Pesach, and that is perfectly uh, fine. And to those who can't give up their Starbucks, there's the Bia. There are a number of Bias that are good, uh, a bunch of flavors, and listed them all on the site that that of the Bia instant coffee that are fine uh, for Pesach. They will not have a bean. That's just a roof. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's fine. When it comes to flavor, uh, again, we're looking at additives. Uh, we're looking at flavoring. We're looking at additives in water. Could they rule? Plain water is plain water. There's no no shtick. There's nothing about water. Water, water is always, of course, kosher lepeso. And therefore, if it's plain water, if it's, um, if it's a pure water, if they cook the water, not a problem. If they're in bottled water, not a problem. Bottled seltzer and plain seltzer. Most posts, including the OU and the OK and uh, others to say, fine, plain, plain seltzer. Now, seltzer means they put CO2 into water. That's what, that's what seltzer is. There are other products that are not that. There's tonic water, which has numerous additives to it. And there is club soda, which has numerous additives to it. These are problematic. These are problematic, just they're not, not hard, but they have to be made kosher lepesach. They're sold in our area, kosher lepesach. They're available, but they do need it. On the other hand, the plain Perrier, for instance, uh, does happen to have an OKP on it. Doesn't need it. They agree it doesn't need it. And the other ones, the flavored ones, this is unflavored. Flavored ones, um, won't work. Flavored ones, they do not give us chocolate for good reason. The flavoring is usually floated off with a hummus alcohol, and therefore they can't use the uh, flavoring added to it. Again, any type of plain water is good. Now, minerals, there was something a couple of years ago that minerals are problems. That's usually not true. Most minerals are okay. It's a smart water. This is a popular brand of water that people like. It's fine. The OU has checked in and said that it's fine uh, for a pesa. Uh, I've listed a couple of things that are a problem with citrate, but usually uh, minerals are not uh, an issue. When it comes to um, nuts, the un flavored, regular raw nuts remain fine. If they have BHA, BHT, then they would need ashgaha. BHA and BHT are preservatives. They're nothing, they're not hummus, they're not kidneys, but they're glued on with kidneys. They're glued on to the product with, uh, with, with liquid uh, corn syrup. And that's the reason for that using. But, most good stuff that we find in the market, most of the good types of nuts don't have anything on them. They'll be just the nut and nothing else. The reason I'm putting BHA and BHT, it'll last longer. It's good for the company. They can sell something uh, two months old and it still will be in relatively uh, good shape. But we, we uh, otherwise don't have to worry. The only thing we do uh, consider is if there's a nut, like if, if, if certain nuts, walnuts, not an issue, uh, but the pecans, like this, if there are half whole pecans, half pecans, not a problem. If they're chopped pecans, the problem is when they get so small, an oil comes out. The, from them. Since they have a, a distasteful oil, it's countered with the corn syrup, with kidneys. It's the only raw one 
that in processing that an issue, otherwise his laws are, are fine. The um, eggs, uh, eggs are dirty because uh, that's the way they are on the farm and they could be that there's some chicken feed on it. Nowadays, we don't have that so much. The way nowadays our, our chickens are in chicken coops and they lay the eggs, comes down through a tube into something. Our, our eggs are not bloody eggs because we don't have fertilized eggs. All, all the eggs that are sold in all the eggs, you know, places like Albertsons and Ralph's and all of those uh, are unfertilized eggs. That the Rebbeinu made a beautiful mechanism, knowing that we would need eggs. Humanity needed it. A chicken can lay an egg, develop an egg, as the Gemara uh, says in Kulim, either through a male. That's a fertilized egg. That's what used to be here a great deal. And when by a chicken farmer, if you're going on a trip, and by a, a group around, maybe if there's a uh, a farm stand and there's a farmer and selling, those are much more of an issue by the eggs because it's certainly possible that those eggs are fertilized. And then if we find blood in it, that could be blood of a chick. Blood of a chick is not buckled. The blood of a chick can ruin the pots, can ruin everything. That's where Shokhano says cook three eggs together if you're making hard boiled eggs. Our eggs are all not fertilized. As the Gemara says, the other way for chicken to lay an egg, to develop an egg, is pecking on the ground. So farmers, they, uh, egg, uh, the egg producers, but they produce millions of eggs a year, are putting pebbles all over, letting the chickens out. The chickens peck on the pebbles. That starts a mechanism where they develop a full 100% egg that scientifically has been proven to be every bit as nutritious as a fertilized egg. So that's what we have. The supermarkets carry those exclusively because they don't want consumers getting bloody eggs. Nobody wants bloody eggs, uh, even not cautious purposes. So that's why that's what we have. Now we have eggs that are free range, that does not mean fertilized. That means free range. That means they let them out in an area that does not to peck, to peck on the pebbles. It does not mean that they were, uh, that they were actually uh, fertilized. Then we have a number of people were concerned pasteurized eggs. They're pasteurized, first of all, what about visual aquam? Are they cooked? They're not cooked. The three second flash pasteurization, which kills salmonella, and that's all it does. It doesn't cook them, doesn't hurt them, it doesn't do anything. And therefore, that, though those are of no concern, including for PESA, it's not really uh, a concern. Some of the things that we should not worry about as well, white sugar, not powder, powder is an issue, as cornstarch, but regular cane sugar uh, of the white type. Now CMH happens to have the OKP on it all year, always for a number, a number of years. So if you want to be comfortable and get that, there's no reason not. CMH, brown sugar, which has molasses, added to the white sugar uh, later on and could contain in the process anti-foaming agents, the way they take the white sugar and cook it and put some molasses back into it from the outside of it, makes it brown and is so adding in uh, the, the healthy part that was taken out. And now there's the, um, uh, a question of the anti-foaming. It makes a lot of foam, so they put an H in it. Could be a problem. CNH has an OKT all year on the brown sugar. So in our area, they, yes, there's Domino, which is an East Coast product, but the CNH is uh, certainly, and the Domino has as well, and again, but even the Ralph's 
plain uh, sugar or Ralph's Costco, whatever you want to think of, of a plain type, as long as it's not conventional sugar, is uh, absolutely uh, fine. When it comes to um, spices, spices are a little bit different. Uh, plain spices used to be okay. The problem is much as the way of the ice cream. Ice cream, Baskin Robbins had a plant and made ice cream. Carvel had a plant and an ice cream. Everybody had a plant and they made ice cream. Then they realized that's not a good idea. They're spending too much on making on the, on the manufacturer. So now there's five left in the United States. Five large companies in our in West Coast as well that produce everybody. Everybody gives in a formula and they get the products, they approve the final thing and the machinery that makes it all the same. It's all the same company. All oh, then this company will have a, an area in the warehouse that is for one place and for another brand for another brand. That's the way it is going a great deal in spices. And the spice machine, in order to economize, now do everything, which which contaminates has contaminated a lot of it. The only thing that we can be sure of without contamination is something whole. This is black peppercorns, or uh, perhaps something like uh, cinnamon sticks. These haven't been processed. They haven't been processed, they haven't been chopped up and ground on machinery. These are fine without hashkafa, any hashkafa, and without hashkafa for Pesach. Uh, not, not a, an issue of those would be, uh, would be fine. The uh, lemon juice and the lime juice I've seen in our area coming from Eric to Sol with no ashrafa. They have to be very careful because it's trumas, maizes, mita, whatever. There's a lot of that. But let's say the biggest one, real lemon and real lime. They, they make the same in this type of a container. The real lime is green and the real lemon is a yellow one. Those are kosher lepesa, although they do not say so. But they are partial of this up in, in any case. And they, um, although somewhat debatable, uh, but uh, I think the OU's position, which I think is a very solid one, all paper, all plastic, all styrofoam, so it's not very hard to remember, that all of these, all of the a cardboard or kosher lepesa. There's some debate on the thin white plates, whether there's uh, starch used, probably better to avoid them. There are those who say that even those could be used better. Uh, again, we, we have plenty. It's easy, easy enough to uh, avoid. Plain toothpicks are, is, again, out of Shiloh and scrubbing pads and all that sort of thing, sponges, there's again uh, no Shiloh concerning those. Um, one of the difficulties uh, this year, it started last year, is that Tums have bit the dirt. This one's uh, gone. It has, it's been found to have kidney oils <clears throat> the way that usually maybe other Shilohs, and therefore. It should not be used uh, for it. There is uh, a site, koshervitamins.com, that I highly recommend. They have many things, including these types of uh, flowers, a, a plantain flower, coconut uh, flower, a, uh, this one, a grain-free flowers of the air. All these are under Kodash Kodashkala's for Pesach. They are substitute the person can make. Uh, whatever they like. We, um, we suffer from something I think the Gamorian Kedushin says. That the Gamorian Kedushin says, Mayim genuvim yimtaku. Stolen water is sweet. Comes uh, Pesach, people buy, most of us buy things we'd never consider. 
would never take it, give it a second glance in the store. But if it's, oh, it's for Pesach, I can have that. So it's an imitation of pizza that doesn't taste so good. It's maybe something like this imitation rolls that don't taste good at all. Uh, but having rolls on Pesach, well, that's kind of <laughs> cheating and getting away with it. So I assume that's the, the, we should think about it what we really uh, are getting and what we want to get. The drinks, we have, again, Coke and regular and a diet that's being produced locally. Uh, and uh, usually as a loss leader and a good price in many places, uh, matzahs are available in our local markets, also often at a loss leader. Um, they'll do it, I think I saw the uh, Holy Land matzahs, so so, but they're, they're kosher, they're uh, kosher certified. And those were at 23, and many other places are much more expensive. When it comes to Coke, just one thing to think about uh, what you do is what everyone uh, can decide about it. Diet Coke, most everybody does drink. It is O U P, it says on the cap. OUP, that's where we find it. It has kidneys in it, kind of. It has uh, corn syrup that has been changed into something we call aspartame. And the aspartame is, uh, is a corn syrup that has been changed now uh, with, uh, with various acids into a, a sweeter product. And uh, so since it's Kitneos Shinishtanu, the, the OU and numerous other people have said that's okay to use. Not everyone uses it though. So just, it's just something to be aware of that if you see somebody has some uh, Mayim Chaim or some other atrocious type of a, uh, a uh, dietetic soda, that might be the reason uh, why why they're doing such a thing. Keep in mind that regular type of a um, uh, of any uh, uh, not vegetables, those are not good, but fruits, plain solid fruits like these mango chunks, frozen mango chunks, that's all they are. If you look at the ingredients, frozen mango chunks. Those are okay. The peas and carrots, well, the peas are a problem because they're kidneys. And not only that, even if they won't be, even if it's just frozen carrots, but they're blanched often in pasta equipment. So that's not going to work. Not on the vegetables, but on the fruit, just frozen fruit that is, uh, that is okay uh, to use. And for person, maple syrup. It is nothing wrong really with maple syrup, but the defomer again in the machine, there's a defomer has to be, and that might be, um, that that often is a problem. So we should get it with the, the stores, our local mm -hmm. stores carry agave syrup and maple syrup with our Schoffer Professor, and that's really what a person should get. Again, going to on sugar, keep in mind that something like sugar in the raw, just regular carbonate sugar, is fine. And then there's a company called Heaven and Earth. But they know a lot of Pesach stuff. Heaven and Earth has a pure date sugar that is an OUP uh, on it. It's just a date uh, sugar. On the other hand, Heaven and Earth in the kidneys products, you got to be careful with this. Right? It's like Cambridge and other kosher stores have, here's a, a spaghetti, a heaven and earth grain-free pasta that right away is giving us a hint that it was made for Peso. It's grain-free and it has an OUP along with other Ashkafas and it is reliably certified for Peso. The same company makes in a different color, something very similar looking, it has an OU. And that one 
says it is only, that is OU Mara, and they have an Israeli hashkoch on this one, that it is kosher for Pesach with Kitnios. So this is not, again, Pesach products come in three ways. They come in kosher for Pesach for everyone, kosher and Pesach for Kitnios, and not kosher for Pesach. So we get all sorts, you can have three types of pasta looking alike, and we have to be very careful. That's true of the cookies, that's true of the cakes, that's true of just about everything. Look alikes, unfortunately, are the name of the industry. So we really have to be uh, careful. The, um, this unfortunately did not go kosher. The pig out pigless pork rinds um, are only kosher during the year with an OU, but they're not uh, they're not for uh, Pesach. So that's just keep in mind. If somebody wants to eat pigless pork rinds, uh, then it's before next time. The uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there is. There are many different types of grapeseed oil and pompeian. We start giving us that it doesn't need ashkar for Pesach, but pompeian is all right without ashkar for Pesach. There's also the Tuscanini company makes a white cooking wine, and it does need ashkar. Balsamic vinegar, keep in mind, is balsam is its wine. It, definitely needs a good ashkocha for Pesach or it should not uh, should not be used. The baby carrots most really are okay of uh, baby carrots. There's nothing in them and there's not even baby carrots in them. Uh, there's, uh, there, there's no such thing as baby carrots. These are a uh, carrot, about an eight to ten inch long carrot that's cut up into pieces and the ends of it are rounded to make it look like a baby. But so it's not baby carrots and it's not kidneys and it's not pummets. And but it is carrots, so it's fine. A person could could have that. On the other hand, most of the Crayola stuff is okay. The modeling clay, they make a modeling clay, they make a um, finger paint that is pummets. Anything that in a figure, if you're not sure, anything that kids put in their mouth that's made for very young kids and they put in their mouth, they make edible. Play dough, of course, is regular omelets. They can bake a cake if you really wanted to with the play dough. They make it 100% edible, fingering that many of those using play dough will put it in their mouth and. Uh, and therefore, they make it where it's it's not a problem. Uh, in it. Fox's you bet a number of years ago went to the OU from the K. It was good when it had the K. It's good when it has the OUP on it. And uh, but be careful that it has the OUP. It does. It does need it. Coconut milk. There's a number of companies that do coconut uh, milk. There's a couple X's I've listed, including. Uh, the um, uh, Trader Joe's has coconut water that's okay, and a coconut the uh, BCK has checked and give dash on it, and a, uh, and a, a coconut smoothie that has a BCK, not a P, and it's all right. They said to to uh, use it. The when it comes to. Uh, to uh, feeding pets, we have to feed them kosher or Pesach. Not that they have to keep Pesach, but we do. And we're not allowed to benefit from, um, from anything that's hummus. We can't even benefit, we can't put it in the fireplace and warm up with it. So there were blood worms for, let's say, fish. There's kosher or Pesach certified two companies, but there's a whole lot. Again, I have listed it. Please look at the list uh, of things for all sorts of pets. And they do not need ashkoffer. One does not need to spend 
this kind of money on it, they're, they're quite okay anyway. Some things to keep in mind uh, that are problematic. The imitation coffee, those who don't want to drink coffee, these are grains, roasted grain beverage. This is like a loaf of bread. This is just straight grains of hummus. And this is Roma, the biggest company that are many that have grain beverages. Then there's things like oat milk, fine during the year. This one has, has OUD, but Campesa, it's hummus gomor. And then there's oat chocolate bars that are parv, that are OU parv, but again, hummus gomor. So if a person doesn't sell hummus, get rid of them uh, before a person. If a person does, make sure to sell them either way. Plain, uh, when it comes to aluminum foil, uh, whatever the type of aluminum foil it is, off-brand, major brand, won't make a difference. It's, in, it's uh, formed into something. It's not formed. It's just being plain foil paper. Either way, they are good. They are always um, good for PESA, and they can be used without any hashkoha on them whatsoever. Parchment paper, some parchment paper is made with pig fat. And so parchment paper needs a good hashkoha. Somebody cooked with uncertified parchment paper, they should ask a shayma. That's uh, really a questionable problem. Once it has hashkoha, there are many, again, that have listed those are fine. Uh, to use. Although we lost the tums, we, at least we still have Tylenol and most things. Keep in mind when it comes to medication, uh, serious medication is uh, very much not a shyla. Somebody has serious heart medication, other medication, that's not what a shyla is. Most medication, we always, all year, prefer that it's a tablet or a capsule. Tablet and capsules are consumed not normally. They're shoved down a person's throat. That, the Gamora and Colin says, is not called eating. Eating is putting in the mouth, tasting, chewing, and swallowing. So therefore, if uh, taking the Gamora's case, person takes a, a piece of hazard and shoves it down another person's throat on Yom Kippur, they're not Chayiv, because they didn't eat. Person didn't eat. It's for sure fresh Chazer. It's for sure these Yom Kippur. He's not going to be Chayiv because, because he didn't do the act of eating. So medications that are not eaten, that are swallowed, are always uh, preferable. Pesach, one should always ask for Shaila, I've listed many uh, on the, the quinoa. There's Many of them, it's been already proven that it does need Ashkoch for Pesach simply because often they're grown next to wheat fields. But in any case, uh, there are many types uh, of the quinoa, uh, including quinoa flour and so on. And uh, uh, that's certainly an easy product for a person uh, to get. The uh, dental floss, is unflavored, is not an issue. Salt comes many types. There's Himalayan sea salt. There's a, a regular sea salt. There's a Morton salt. There's a Morton iodized salt and a more non-iodized salt. As long as the salt is real and not iodized. When I say real, Himalayan uh, pink salt, it comes in two types, real, and comes in a, uh, where it was dyed pink. Since the real stuff is pink, so therefore the cheaper stuff is not. It was dyed pink. Now we have to worry about the coloring. But if it was a real plain salt with no iodine, that's not an issue. Once it has iodine, then we have to worry that the iodine is glued on again like the nuts, 
with uh, corn syrup. But, but if it doesn't have iodine, it's fine. The sea salt, I would just keep in mind what a Shabura mentions, that if it's the sea salt does not cook ever. Sea salt is evaporated. Sea salt is put into a huge thing of acres of uh, not, not very deep sea uh, water, of salty water, it evaporates, it is purified, and it's never cooked. It's a part of why it is a, according to some healthier product. But having not been cooked, using it on Shabbos could be problematic. It's certainly if a person wants to put it right into a pot on the fire, that could be problematic. A person would have to explore what they're cooking and whether they could cook, whether they could use that uh, on Shabbos uh, or not. Or, uh, Peeled garlic should not be used for Pesach without hashgacha. When they <clears> peel it, they're usually putting a preservative. Once you open anything, you want to put a preservative. So what's being done in the past couple of years is that they're all being coated with a phosphate of different things to preserve, and that can be um, a problem of kidneys. And therefore, a person would get uh, fresh garlic and they're just making their own clothes, that's fine. But a person should not buy, unless as a shkach for Pesach, uh, a container, a whole container uh, of, of it. There is a product for Pesach that we're not so used to. It's called matzah. <laughs> After all of this, there is something for matzah. Well, matzah comes in various ways. We should think when it says 18 minute matzahs, what does that mean? Uh, people have asked me, is Shmur matzah 18 minute matzahs? Certainly. 18 minute matzahs means that every 18 minutes, it takes 18 minutes to rise the, the dough. So uh, the expensive procedure is every 18 minutes, 17 minutes, it's cut, the all machinery stops, everything is cleaned in sight, and everything. All the machinery, everything is clean. And then when everything is done, start over. Obviously, that changes the price. All shmura matzah is 18-minute matzahs, plus the, the actual wheat used was shmura, was watched. Some watched it from rain affecting it, that perhaps when it's dry enough, would start making it comments. Some watch it in the field, some watch it once they cut it. That's a different, they say, on the illusion. Then there's another matzah, the oat matzah, which is uh, some people need this if they have a difficulty with regular matzah. Otherwise, it should not be used for the mitzvahs. It should not be used for the mitzvahs of the storing, but those that need to use it, there's a very expensive oat matzah hand and machine that one can use for the mitzvahs. Egg matzahs uh, are a little bit confusing because egg matzahs have been uh, told, well, they can't be used on Pesach, but it can be used on Pesach. Well, it all depends what they are and to whom. If it's an egg matzah, then it says right on it that's only for people who must, little children, uh, people who are ill, who have to use it because it's kind of matzah ashira, what's called a matzah ashira. It's much more palatable than a plain uh, matzah. On the other hand, there's chocolate covered matzahs. Where does that lie? Well, that doesn't lie anywhere. It depends what it is. One has to look very carefully. Some of them are chocolate covered egg matzahs, and many are chocolate covered regular matzahs. There's nothing wrong with taking a good kosher matzah and putting chocolate on it. So that a great deal of our chocolate covered matzahs today are fine. One has to just look what they are and they will say on it, what it whether it was coated regular matzah or it will say egg matzah uh, right on it. Then there's a gluten-free one, something a very good product for era Pesach, especially People who are getting hungry. And although it imitates matzah, it's not. It's just made to be like tapioca starch, potato starch. It's just some starches 
and uh, therefore it doesn't, it's nowhere. It made kosher lepesa, some of them. This one says made the use of Passover in year round. It's an OUP uh, product, some are not. But if you look and it says it is, it can be used uh, on Arab Pesach when we're not allowed to eat matzah at all that day. But this is not matzah. It just was made to form like that. So therefore it's, uh, so when it comes to um, types of uh, dishwashing detergent, the real hot waffle is any of them that you use. That uh, I've listed the numerous ones only for comfort level, but really they're not food. The same thing is charcoal. It's not food. The person making a barbecue, it's not food. And therefore those types of things that are not, are not problematic. The glue remains the same on the paper towels, preferable not to use the glue uh, that glues it together at the end, but otherwise, um, otherwise it's okay. Okay, I think, oh, no, oh, I didn't want to mention honey. Honey, more and more, is being adulterated. Some of it, where there's no honey in it, and tested, lab tested, some of it has nothing, no, no honey. It was only a corn syrup. A lot of it has corn syrup. So therefore, a person should get, it's easy to get most of our kosher honeys they have anyway all year, easy to get with the, for Pesach, but it has to be certified uh, for Pesach that it is truly a, um, a kosher or Pesach uh, type of a honey, and then we know that it is uh, pure. Again, when you're shopping, be careful, some very good brands, um, like the California Delight, a very good thing with the Star K on it all year, Many of their products now have the star S like this one, which means that they have for Spartan and only for Oakley Kidneyos and not, not for anyone else. The other ones should not be used. Okay, I think, Rabbi, I think that's the vote. Thank question. you. Thank you. Just some clarifications that I have, and then we'll open up to a number of questions. I'm positive. Trader Joe's olive oil. What is the story on that? That one is different in the fact that it is uh, also the version. The BCK said that they checked that their version is as good as the extra version. All of the extra version olive oils are fine. The Costco, the Routes, whoever. But the Trader Joe's, the BCK said they have checked. They give us go on. It has a BCK. does not have a BCK peak. But they said that they checked that even the virgin is good. So virgin, Trader Joe's virgin olive oil does not have a hashgacha on it, and it's fine. But it has a year-round hashgacha. Oh, okay. It'll have the BCK, or actually, I think they that one, they already put the newer symbol, the check K. It'll have the check K. Since they said the BCK and check K is the same company. And uh, extra virgin Olive oil, does it need a hashgacha for Pesach? Normal virgin, that's extra virgin, does not. The government changed the rules, and now virgin olive oil generally can be cooked. Trader Joe's is not. Okay, raisins, you said plain raisins are fine. That is correct, across the board. And what's the story on the coconut milk? I didn't understand. Does it need a hashgacha? But the coconut water... There are many coconut waters I've listed that are just fine. But the oh, coconut the milk. Milk needs our scoffer. They're the processing and the additives. It, it does need, uh, yes. yes. You said dental floss unflavored is fine. What about the flavored one? Uh, it's better not. Hard to say that, it, uh, that the person is doing much, but most of the flavored contain kidneys. When and they, Tums, Tums, you said not to use. Tums not to use this year. I suggest people who wish to have tubs to order the Adway one. And I, uh, when I order it from kosherbitamins.com. There, Sid's Pharmacy carries it, uh, and so do I some other places. The Adway and those uh, Jewish companies that make for Pesach. Okay. Um, 
Does anybody have quite okay? So somebody wrote in the past you have said regular milk can be used if it's purchased before Pesach. That remains correct. So yes. it just has to be purchased before Pesach. And during Pesach, what did you say? During Pesach, it depends how Pesach we're into. The milk remains milk, usually for about four days till we get it. So it just has, it doesn't have to be in the store. I don't care who owns it. I just care that it was milk because of the added vitamin D of a its nature, which is a teensy amount, two parts per million. But during Pesach is not bottle. Before Pesach is bottle. So as long as it was produced, as long as they did their vitamin D in the tanker, in the container before, we're good. So for certainly Cholomite, certainly until Shabbos this year, a person would be going, let's say they had, don't have room in the fridge for the starring, and they want to go after the starring on, on uh, fry Thursday, Friday to buy, they certainly would be safe. Likely Matzah Shabbos, which is not restocked, would be just the same. What about half and half? Half and half is more difficult, but in theory, if the half and half has nothing in it, just the half and half in theory is okay. What about, uh, there was some, whoops, somebody had, okay, we have many Spartim who will be with us. Oh, you're, they're jumping here. Okay, one second. We have many Spartim who will be with us, including one of the cooks. How do we manage their food customs? Can we share cooking utensils and just not eat the food? What are the guidelines? That's, uh, there are different, she just uh, three different opinions in halakha on that. One is yes, since it's only a minute. One is yes, after 24 hours of non-use of the bleas of the kaling. And one is no, flat no. So, they really, that rabbi is more for your guidance to the person on that. But those three, there are those three opinions uh, that exist. Uh, what about stevia? Uh, that considered there are, best thing is again, the kosher vitamins or one of the other stores. There's a lot of it in xylitol that is kosher. But it has to be made kosher. Vesa, the agent that transforms it can be uh, from its alcohol. So stevia needs hashkacha. Yes. Okay. May chocolate covered matzos be used to be yotze the mitzvah of matzah? No. <laughs> That'll be fine. Okay. But okay. What's, <laughs> what's the opinion about baby food pouches? So the best thing about baby food to do is. Uh, the Starke has, I mean, I've listed a few that are hard to get. Kosher stores are carrying some baby food. Best thing is to make it yourself. Uh, <laughs> really, it's the cheapest, and the stuff is ridiculously expensive to buy because it's coming from Israel, where we have. The United States is not making a lot left. So there are, there's Earth Best does have uh, three. Um, there are a couple of them that we could use the straight apple and uh, this applesauce that they're making, but most have additives and methods of process that are not good and best if the person makes it on their own. Uh, or- their own baby or, food, you're saying? Early ones. They should make their own baby food? Is that what you're suggesting? Make, make their own. If you look at the Star K site, they have many recipes mm. for a person making their own out of rice, Let's say we could feed rice to a baby. The person wants rice pudding, rice uh, anything for it, and they can't get it for Pesach, and sometimes it is hummus that's mixed in commonly, then it's easy to make. It's not a hard thing to make a rice type of a product for uh, infants or young children. Again, we have fine. That's where I was come to you when to use that head or when not, but. Definitely at times that is what. Is there any pre cut parchment paper okay? Is any pre cut parchment paper okay? And to many of them use a pig fat. So, pre parchment paper needs a 
Most of the ones with Ashkocha are kosher of Pesach, but it needs Ashkocha that it's not with Hitbet. Parchment paper is a very sensitive uh, product. The bottom line, parchment paper needs Ashkocha. Okay, for Yantif. What about av avocado oil? Avocado oil, um, most avocado oils, again, I've listed a few different types uh, that are definitely okay without Ashkocha for Pesach. Uh, some allow all avocado oil that is uh, extra virgin, uh, and some prefer the ashkocha. So I put I've listed a number of them in, on the site that one can see. It, real lemon in large bottles are they okay? I said which? They ask the person's asking real lemon in large bottles. Is that okay? Hundred percent. Hundred percent is okay. Fine. Any almond milk okay? Uh, it depends how you define okay. There's many almond milks. Some of them are hummus. Some of them are kidneyos. And some of them are neither. Most of them are just pure almond milk, but made on kidneyos or hummus equipment. And those are okay sometimes for babies and for uh, other kids. For adults, who want to have for their coffee a substitute to get one of the kosher ones for best. They have right. they come with ashkachas? Almond uh, almond milk comes flavors. Captain has there's a few coconut milks and a few almond uh quite a few almond milks, a few brands now that with hashkacha for best. Frozen orange juice concentrate is fine without hashkacha. Uh, if it's plain, there's no additives. It just says frozen juice. Uh, mo almost always those are fine. What is the website to see which pods for Nespresso are okay for Pesach? I've listed a, a kosher quest. What is it? This morning, Nespresso. it was listed on uh, Nespresso. Nespresso is the, uh, the uh, machine that uses pods, and it's quite popular. They happen to have the biggest list of things at Kosher La Pesa. It's on the Kosher Quest site. One can download the entire list. Can you clarify the status of cut vegetables besides baby carrots? You dealt with baby carrots, but what about other vegetables, cut vegetables? And what about oh. shredded cabbage or washed lettuce bags? Uh, those are all, unless marked, that they are kosher pesa. If it's cooked vegetables, those are steamed on pasta equipment. If it is raw vegetables, they can be good, but they, they, due to the citric acid, they need a shkocha for Pesach. So bottom line, cut vegetables need a hashkocha for Pesach? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I, that's so far all of the questions that are on the chat. Well, one second. Can eggs be bought on Pesach? Yes. Right. The minha, uh, I had mentioned, I think, before, because people used to have in their uh, yard their chickens, and they would throw out hummets, and therefore it could be the eggs were made with hummets, or maybe now they're eating hummets and it's uh, healthy. So the minha uh, is to buy them before. However, buying before is like the milk. The eggs are longer. Throughout most of Pesach, up until the last days, it's going to still be before any of us. So it's a moot point. And, uh, so they're and, fine to buy during Pesach. Yeah. And so Flour, the next questions are sour cream and cottage cheese. Much, uh, due to the starter, I have to have Ashkocha. Both of them needs Ashkocha. Okay. Are there any further questions? One second. Okay. Raw slivered almonds. If they are raw, uh, raw slivered almonds without BHA and BH terrifying. They're what? I'm sorry? They do not need any ashkocha. And if they're raw. Pesa. Even though they're slivered. Even though they're slivered. Only okay. suffer from slivered. Nothing okay. Else. Any other questions or there are no further questions on the chat? I think we've covered them all. 
Yes? Okay. We want to thank Rabbi Eidlitz very much, and we wish everybody a Chag Kosher V'Sameach, a big Yashikach, Rabbi. Okay, thanks loads. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, well, so the alkaline water.